Hi, welcome to this video for the Educast Paper 1 GCSE English Language. I'm recording this a few days before the Monday exam. Um, so remember this is fiction, so this is reading fiction, an extract and writing a short story. So it's 1 hour 45 minutes for the exam, you get an hour for the reading and 45 minutes for the short story. However, if you want to, you can do the short story first and have the reading exam. Remember, there will be no one after an hour to tell you to start the short story, so you've got to make sure you keep looking at the clock throughout the exam. Extra time students, you get 2 hour 11 minutes, if you get 25% extra time, that's an extra 26 minutes. So the reading exam is like 1 hour, like I said. And looking at feedback from my group, so this is maybe students who have got a grade 3 and looking to get 4, 5, 6. Um, we're pretty good at doing PEEs and picking the right quotes, but the main problem is timing. And I would say whoever's looking at this video, a lot of the time the main reason pe why people don't get grade 4 or 5 or 6 is not so much their English skills, so obviously that's a, a major part, but it's just timing. The main thing is you've got to finish the exam. If you have any extra time, use it. Don't. If you've got 10 minutes left, don't be sitting there at your desk looking into space. Write some more of your short story, do another PEE. So this is the timings for the exams. Basically, if it's a 5 mark question, you get about 5 minutes. And if it's a 10 mark question, you get 13 to 15. So remember, this is a di bit different to um, paper 2. Okay, so um, you'll get two how questions one found information question, one impression question, and one evaluation question at the end. And paper two, you basically have the whole extract to read, while in paper one, you get line reading. So please don't, when you get the exam paper, don't read the whole exam paper, just read the lines it wants you to say. So for example, question number one, it says, read lines one to seven, just read lines one to seven. You must time manage which I've talked about. Okay, so remember then, if it's a five mark question, five minutes, if it's a 10 mark question, 13 to 15 minutes. And if it's a five mark question, you're trying to use three to five quotes and talk about them. If it's a 10 mark question, six to 10 quotes. So question one is an e easy bullet point kind of question. It's five marks, five minutes. Try and write a little sentence if you can. It does say in the mark scheme, no, walk sh no mark should be awarded for unabridged quotations of whole sentences, uneasy focus. So that means if, the, if, you are, if they ask you a question, don't just write out a whole quote because um, it might not answer the question. So I would always, and I would do this for every question in the exam, this question I'm looking at here is um, read lines one to nine. So I would always put with my highlighter a box around the question. So. If maybe question two says to put it around 10 to 36, I would draw a box around 10 to 36. So this question then is an easy question. It's a nice little intro to the exam. It's a bullet point question. So it says, read lines one to nine, list five reasons why Obed went to South Africa. So you'd read the extract and pick out five reasons why he went to South Africa. Pretty, pretty simple. So if you want to pause the video, do it yourselves. Okay, so the things I picked out were that things were bad for, for him in the past in his own country. Um, he went for work. His father said he should go. Um, his lands were not good enough to support him and his wife. Um, they grew just enough crops to keep us through the year, so they needed, they needed better lands. And that is the mark scheme. Okay, so in a question where it's bullet point five things, there probably will be six or seven things in the answer. Um, if you're doing well for time, you could write down six things, so just in case you get one wrong, you've got one in the bank, so it were. Okay, question two. Okay, um, question two will be worth five marks, and you're trying to do four or five quotes, talk about, talk about um, four or five quotes from the text, okay? Remember, if it's a five mark question, again, the examiner loves quotes. So this person, this student, these are two student answers. This person, these two um, students, example one and two, they were just the same um, ability-wise in English, just as good as each other. However, one person used quote and the other person didn't. So that in the red here, one quote can only get one out of five. Okay, this person used six quotes, they got five out of five. So if anything you, any two things you take from this video is you must time manage and you must use as many quotes as you can. So what impressions the right career of Emma? What does impressions mean? So it basically means a kind of view you might have of a place or person when you read what is said about them. So read the extract. Okay, so to do this question, read the text. Think about three or four opinions of the person or the place. 
underline the questions that tell you this and pull it together. Uh, they whispered as my cheeks went red. So, if I said they whispered, what impression would we get of the people? Well, whispered maybe suggests they're secretive, yeah? Uh, cheeks went red, that might suggest someone's embarrassed. So if we put that into two little sentences, the top one, one impression I get of the couple is they are secretive, as it says they whispered. Second one, one impression I get of the character is embarrassed, as it says her cheeks went red. That is basically what, uh, the, what the question is. Picking out a word and saying why it's been used. The impressions question can be worth five or ten marks. So remember, if it's worth five marks, five, five or six minutes, five or six quotes. If it's worth ten marks, six to ten quotes and 13 to 15 minutes. To be honest, if the impression question is worth ten marks, you'll be doing quite well because I think it's probably simpler than a standard how question. Let's look at another one. He beat his fist on the table as the girl shrieked. Okay, so this tells me that the character is angry about something, and girl shrieked. So that's what a guy's angry. And shrieked tells me someone is scared of something. So, like we did um, about 30 seconds ago, why don't you, before skipping on to the next bit, pause the video and see if you can write a sentence for each of those quotes? Okay, so one mark would be one impression I get of the man is he's angry, as he says he beat his hands on the table. And the second one, shrieked gives me the impression that the girl is scared. So notice two things about this. First thing, notice how I've not copied out the whole quote. I just picked out the one word in the quote that tells me my answer. So what was the bit that told me she was scared? It was the word shrieked. So I'm just picking out the word shrieked. So in your exam, when you are talking about quotes, never copy out a quote that has, that has got seven or eight words. Try to pick one or two word quotes. The second thing, if you'll notice on the shrieked one, after the first time I've put one impression I get of the man, I don't have to copy that out every time. Um, say if you're doing six PEs, maybe you, um, you do it a couple of times. So yeah, these are really small PEs. So remember, in this exam, we want to write small PEs about a lot of different quotes, as opposed to two, cho two choose PEs on two quotes okay so the examiner loves quotes to so make sure you get them in okay again have a go at this one on your own he strutted along the street while looking at his reflection in the shop window so question could be what impression do you get of the man in this question or in this extract so if you can write two impressions sentences if not have a go at one and pause the video Okay, so one impression I get of the man is he's confident as he strutted down the road. Okay, so strutted is like a confident, almost bordering arrogant walk like we see Drake doing in the video. And the second one could be if, if you saw someone walking down the street looking at themselves in every shop window, what would you think about that person? So you may think, um, and I, but I think he seems vain when it says he was looking at his reflection in the shop to see how good he looked. Okay, so it's a bit of a bigger quote, but I probably needed it in that example. Okay, so what I want you to do now then, is this is from an example, it's from the same example as question one. So have a read of it, it's about um, Obed working down a mine. Okay, and the question is, what impressions do you get of the work in the mines from these lines? So this isn't an impression of a person, this is an impression of the place. So what impressions do you get of the, the mines in, in these lines? This example you see is 10 marks. Okay, so in this example you try to find 6 to 10 quotes that tell you... Um, what kind of place the mines are. For example, if you look at the second line, line 14, 19, sorry, it said they talked to us about safety and how the rock could fall and crush us. So crush, that might suggest to you that it, it's dangerous. So if you could find any other quotes that show it's dangerous as well, that's a good way of getting, getting a lot of quotes into your answer. So pause the video if you want to go on your own. Okay, here are my ones. The main impression I get of the mines is it's dangerous as they were told the rocks could crush them. It seems mentally tough as all the men have to learn a strange language. Another impression that the men that I get is the men are almost trapped in the mines. They put us in cages. This suggests the men are treated like imprisoned animals. Another impression is the work is challenging. We are told the tunnels are long, dark and filled with dust. It suggests the mines are a ne depressing, negative and fearful place. Yeah, so in that one I've gone into a bit more detail. What do long and dark suggest? Well, negative, depressing. Notice in that in the question, um, in answer number four as well, I got three quotes in my one sentence. The examiner would really like that. And last one, the work seems physically exhausting as they work 10 hours a day. Pretty simple. So if you look at that, my red is my impression and my blue is my quote to back it up. Okay, so the question three or four, the how questions. The how questions won't definitely be question three and four. They could be two and four, two and three. 
So remember how questions can be worth five or 10 marks. Uh, what I mean by how questions is that the, um, is the question starts with how. So in this case, the question is, how does the writer make these lines exciting and dramatic? A 10 mark question would be six to 10 quotes in 13 to 15 minutes. If it's a five mark question, four to six quotes in five to six minutes. Okay, so the how question overview is quite simple. It's quite simple, um, like the impression one, slight difference. So explain why you picked a quote out and why it makes it exciting and dramatic and try and do as many as you can in 13 minutes. Although I've told you to do 7.10, it's more to do with the clock. If after 13 minutes you've done seven quotes, amazing. If after 13 minutes you've done two quotes, it doesn't matter. You move on. You don't spend any more time on a question than another question. So comments from November, so the re, um, last year about this exam that people did wrong were too much time spent on low mark questions. So don't spend 15 minutes on a five mark question. Lots of quotes the examiner loves, and this is directly from the exam board. Plenty of quotes gives a student high marks. So literally the person who made the exam paper is telling you, put in as many quotes as you can. And more quotes needed across the whole text. Okay, so what I mean by that is um, if you've got an extra, uh, an extract that is one uh, 25 lines make sure your quotes come from all over the 25 lines not just at the start or at the end so remember why do we want a lot of quotes well this person did four quotes so they could only get about three out of ten and this person did 11 quotes so they get nine out of ten remember you don't have to explain every single quote if it's obvious if it's an obvious quote okay um, but try and get as many quotes as in there as you can okay so um, again like I said take your quotes so this would be bad yeah because it's, it's not showing you've got quotes from all over the extract. So this is the kind of thing that we, we would want. So you've taken quotes from nearly all of the lines and explained it. So to get a grade five and above, use a quote and say how it makes the writing exciting and dramatic. One or two sentences per quote, no waffle along PEs. So we want eight or nine quotes and points, not two huge PEs about one quote. Okay, so I'll give you an example of the how questions. How does the writer try to show Mike Perham's voyage was really tough? So this is from paper two, but to be honest, the how question we can use for, for both papers. So this is about a guy, um, a 17-year-old boy who sailed around the world on his own. Okay, so um, the first PE I'm going to show you is, I've picked out huge blisters on his hands. So it's said in the, said in the extract that Mike had huge blisters on his hands from day one. So why would this make his trip or voyage really tough. So the writer makes the voyage seem tough by describing Mike, in, Mike having huge blisters on his hands from day one. This tells the reader he was in pain all the way through his trip. So pretty simply, I picked that quote. Why would it make it tough? Well, basically, if he's got huge blisters like these, yeah, he's going to be in pain doing a real physical thing. Okay, another one. Mike did the trip solo. So the writer didn't have to use the word solo. Why have they put the right, why have they put that word in there? And basically, because this makes it tough because it shows that Mike did the whole trip alone with no help from others. Obviously, if he had a team of 30 people on his sailing trip, that's going to be a lot easier than him doing it on his own. Another one, Mike experienced monstrous storms. Okay, so again, let's look at why the writers used words intentionally. The, the writer could have put Mike experienced big storms, Mike experienced storms they didn't have to didn't have to use an adjective at all so why have they bothered using the word monstrous okay so the void seems tough with the mo word monstrous this shows the waves were scary and threatening so what is a monster so monster is something that is huge so you could have put huge in there as well a monster is scary um, a monster is threatening they're almost the writer's almost making out that the um the storms were like um like a monster big bad monster for mike to battle Okay, the weather was torture for Mike. Again, let's look at the words used. They could have said the weather was hard for Mike. The weather was difficult for Mike. They put torture in there. Why have they put torture in there? What does torture suggest? What Sir James suggests? Pain, agony, punishment. So I've just put torture shows the weather made the trip feel like agony for Mike. There you go. So I've linked that word. I've got the word torture. Why has it been put in there? What does it mean? It's almost like you're a human dictionary. Why has that word been used? If you're okay, this is a really important point. If you've got your 13 minutes, you've got one minute left of your 13 minutes, and you've only done two quotes, remember the examiner loves quotes. If you've done that, what you should do is, if you're doing a PE, just don't do the explanation. So if you're really struggling for time, just do the quote. So 
um, the quote up here for the same question was, it does get very lonely. So if I was doing a PEE, I might put, Mike says he is lonely on the trip. This makes it seem tough as Mike has no one to talk to when he was feeling low. Okay, so that's not a bad PEE. If you have, your, if you have enough time, we, I want you to do that, obviously. But if you're struggling for time, just write as many quotes as you can find that tell you it was tough and don't bother explaining it. Just try and do as many as you can in that last minute or so to beef up your number of quotes. So for example, instead of doing the red on here, just put, another way it seems tough is when Mike says he was lonely on the trip and you don't need to explain it. Obviously, if you have enough time, I want you to explain it, but if you're struggling for time, one or two minutes left and you've only got two quotes, try and do three or four like I've got in the blue here where you're just saying why it's tough. So again, the blisters one where we looked at um, back, back a minute ago, yeah, this one, if we've got time, write the whole PEE. If you haven't got time, just go. Another reason why it was really tough is that Mike had huge blisters on his hands from day one, and don't explain it. Okay. Okay, so another example. Um, how does Mark's article show that prisoners in Florence live in extremely harsh conditions? So pause the video and have a go at one of those points. So this is about um, prisoners. Yeah. So basically, the question is how does the writer show the prisons are difficult? Pause one of those videos, pause one of those quotes, and try and write a PE. So they had incredibly small cells. The beds were like concrete with thin mattresses. The conditions gave the prisons the conditions gave the prisoners hallucinations and memory loss. So obviously, hallucinations is like you um, you're seeing stuff that's not there. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, so I've put incredibly small cells makes it seem harsh as the writer seems shocked by how tiny the cells are. I've put the writer shows the harsh conditions by describing the beds as concrete slabs. This suggests the bed was rock solid and painful. So I've got concrete wise. Again, it could have just put slabs. Why is the writer used concrete? And the last one, the writer shows the harsh conditions with the phrase hallucinations and memory loss. Why is that? Why is the writer bother putting that in there? Well, this shows the men are affected mentally as well as physically in the prison, or in the prison. Or you could just say it's um, damaging them, sort of from a medical point of view. Okay, so in this extract we're looking at with Obed, it says how does the writer make these lines tend to be dramatic? Okay, pause the video and see if you can pick out. Obviously in the exam we're looking at five to six to seven to ten, but just maybe pick out one thing here and tell me why it makes it exciting and dramatic. Okay, so remember this answer, pick a quote and say why it's exciting and dramatic. Okay, try and do six or seven small PEs. Okay, so um, I'll read a couple of them out, otherwise just pause the video. So I put, it's dramatic with the quote 200 foot deep. This suggests anyone who falls down the hole will die instantly. Okay, I've put, the word blasted makes the tunnel seem explosive, dangerous, and Obed may be in deep trouble. I've put, they threw him over the edge and into the dark is very dramatic and shocks the reader by a person's death. I've put, the word scream to describe the men's reaction raises attention as the reader can almost hear the way and how loud the man sounded. Scream suggests panic and desperation. And I put the end statement, it was a race I could not let myself lose, tells the reader Obed knew he had to literally run for his life. So pause the video if you want to have a look at the other ones. Okay, question five is the last question in the exam. It said, read lines 47 to the end. In the last 20 lines or so, the writer encourages the reader to feel sympathy. So basically, you've got to look through the extract, pick seven to ten quotes why you feel sorry for Obad. Do you agree with this view? You should agree. Really important, it says, you should write your own impressions of Obed as he is presented here and in the passage as a whole. So a lot of people, where they go wrong in this question is, they just do PEs from lines 47 to the end. It doesn't say that. It says, talk about lines 47 to the end, but also in the extract as a whole. Okay, so again, talked about that. Always agree, it's easier to present an argument. Okay, again, it's a 10 mark question. As it's the last question, I would say, instead of seven to 10, try and find four or five quotes. This is the question people do um, get the worst mark on. It's just because people run out of time, okay? So again, if you're struggling for time, do your PEEs, but don't bother with the explanation. Just try and find seven to 10 quotes that make you feel sorry for him. Remember, it's the last question in the exam. The most important thing about it is giving yourself time to do it. This means managing your time carefully on the rest of the exam. If you don't get to it, it will just say A5 didn't finish and you get a big fat zero. It's worth 10 marks you've got to do give yourself as much time as on the other questions. Okay, so the writer makes us feel sorry for Obed. Do you agree? Yes, we do. So find six or seven quotes that, that make you feel sorry for him and just write it the same as you've done for the other PEs. So I'll give you an example. Um, second line, 
Yeah, so with the second line, which we've already looked at, he says, I had no desire to leave my country. So I've put, I feel sorry for Obed as he had to leave his home country for work and had no desire to leave. He doesn't want to go and he feels love for the country and is proud to live there. So remember, I've started it with I agree or I feel sorry. Yeah, so that's linked to the question. And I've basically put three quotes in there. So the examiner's going to like that. Okay, so I, I, said, I said basically I feel sorry for him because he loves his country and he doesn't want to go, but he has to go. There's my three quotes. Okay, so how do you get top marks? So if it was me, what I would do is do four or five quotes on Obed, you feel sorry for Obed, and then maybe I'll do one little PE on how the characters change during the whole extract. Yeah, people are not one dimension, aren't we? We're not going to feel sorry for Obed all the way through the extract. So if it was me, I would say, um, I feel um, sorry for Obed for the majority of the extract. However, at the end, I feel proud of proud of him. I feel, or, or he's selfish, or he's hard working. So if it was me, I'd do, 90% of my PE is on why I feel sorry for him, but then maybe comment on how he has changed throughout the extract. Okay, so pause the video and see if you can find any more. And I'll read through some. So I've put, although I got away, I would be killed. That was the quote. And I've put, I feel sorry for him when he says I would be killed, meaning he is in fear of his life. Okay, quote was, I woke up every morning feeling like I was in a groaning prison. So he wasn't really in a prison. He's just saying like, so using the simile like he was in a groaning prison. And I thought, I feel sorry for him as prison suggests he felt trapped and punished. Obviously, you can go in a bit more detail about that. You could talk about the adjective um, groaning. You could talk about it's a simile. But I'm more concentrating on, I want seven or eight quotes. I'm just making them short and sharp. So final tips on the reading. Time manage. 5 marks is 5 minutes, 10 marks is 13 to 15. Keep your eye on the clock throughout the exam. Leave a one line gap between all PE so it's clear from the examiner. There's no need to say a word as a verb, noun or adjective. So just talk about the word. Don't talk about um, sort of the word classes. And finish all questions. Again, big thing. Keep your, eye, keep your eye on the clock all the way through. If you finish the exam, you've got an amazing chance of getting the grade that you want.